Thanks a lot for joining. And today I'm going to tell you a story. A story about unmasking and altering the camera footage of these Ray-Ban sunglasses. But first of all, why am I giving this talk and what can you expect from it? So last year it was a, the live bug bounty hacking event and one guy gave a talk about iOS hacking and mentioned these Ray-Ban story sunglasses briefly. I got so fascinated so I talked to him about the sunglasses afterwards and he actually gave me a lot of methodologies on how I can hack it. So I want to do the same for you and provide it on a broader scope. So you will learn some insights on how you can hack these Ray-Ban sunglasses, how they're working and which me uh, security mechanisms are applied. And also you can learn some methodologies for bug bounty hunting on IoT devices because bug bounty hunting on web and web APIs is quite common, but sometimes it's even possible on IoT devices without getting expensive hardware and just with their current tools. And I will demonstrate this on one sample vulnerability I found on these sunglasses. But first of all, what are those sunglasses actually? So those are called Ray-Ban Stories, and they're a cooperation between Meta, so Facebook, and Ray-Ban. And they have here on the side a tiny camera built in where you can record videos. And to control it and access the media, there is a companion app called Facebook View. And you can download it for Android and iOS and access the media files. Now, according to the data sheet, the communication is done via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So how does it actually work if you're using it like a normal user? So the sunglasses have here a small button to actually record it. And if you're recording a video, this tiny privacy LED is turning on. And once you're done recording the videos, you should get a small notification down here in your companion app that if the video is available for download, you can just press it and then the media files get downloaded via Wi-Fi. And then you can just access it like any normal recorded video. So here you can see now a sample recording. So for us hackers, it's ob obviously most important to reverse engineer the communication and learn how the sunglasses are actually communicating with your phone. Now here we have two different types of communication. So first of all, for most of the basic stuff, these sunglasses use Bluetooth Low Energy. So they're running a GAT server, so a general attribute profile server on Bluetooth Low Energy. So this is always used in Bluetooth Low Energy and really common for IoT devices because it's, uh, it doesn't need much energy and it's really easy to communicate. So here on the server, you usually have some kind of characteristics where you can write data from, read data uh, from, and also get notified if something changes. So this would be, for example, changing the volume or changing some video recording settings and so on. Now, if you want to download the media files actually from the sunglasses to your phone, Wi-Fi Direct is used, I assume, because it has a higher data rate. So Wi-Fi Direct actually is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol from the Wi-Fi consortium. And it has the main difference from Wi-Fi that it doesn't need like one central entity, which is like your hotspot or Wi-Fi router at home. So you just have two devices and they negotiate together a common Wi-Fi uh, protocol and launch a hotspot. And it's also possible for groups so multiple devices can join one hotspot. Now, in the next step, we want to reverse engineer this communication and actually look deeper into it. And there are di different tools available for it. So first of all, you can start with the companion app that's on your phone. So here you can do all the basic stuff like reverse engineering the Android app. One really popular tool is JDEX. So there you can decompile the Dalek bytecode from your Android app back to Java code. And then you can just look through the code, find if there are any in, uh, vulnerable signatures, code uh, snippets, or just try to analyze what the app application actually does. But often static analysis is tedious, so you also want to do, look at the dynamic uh, communicate, uh, analysis of the app. So this is really useful when you want to trace some communication, for example, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and so on. 
So here I'm using Frida. Frida is a really popular uh, instrumentation toolkit. So you can use it to trace binary or Java code snippets. So you can just hook any class or function with a, a JavaScript code snippet and override the implementation, for example, to print some function arguments or even replace the whole logic. Now, this is really useful if you want to trace function calls from the Android SDK for Bluetooth communication and so on. But if you want to look into the network communication, there are lots of popular reverse proxies out there, so mitten proxy, burp suite, and so on. So you can also use those to just track the network communication. On the other side, when we're moving away from the phone to the sunglasses again, there we want to analyze the firmware. Here it's harder to provide a common toolset or methodology because it really depends on what's running on the firmware. And therefore we first need to get the firmware. So here is our problem. We know we have the companion app running on our phone. We have the sunglasses and there's running some firmware on it and we want to get access to it. So I wanted to do it in a non-intrusive way because I didn't want to break my glasses, desolder the flash memory and so on. So how can we actually do that? So one idea was this companion app has a firmware update functionality. Maybe we can find something there. Let's have a deeper look into it. So I used Frida to disable the SSL certificate pinning on the app. So I can then intercept all the network communication with Mitten Proxy. So I just created a small hotspot on my PC and connected my phone to it. Then I opened this firmware update page, as you can see here in the screenshot. And you can also see the traced function API call. So we're sending an API request to graph.facebook.com slash firmware OTA update. And we're providing some authorization token, so access token, version, serial number, and so on. Yes, it will be bigger than the next slide. Um, so when we're sending out this um, request to the Facebook API, in this case, we are already on the latest version, but otherwise we are just getting a differential update. So we're only getting what actually changed on the files and not really the full firmware build. Now, I try to dig deeper to get the full firmware image build. And first of all, I decompiled the companion app that's running on your phone and just tried to cross-reference the API call I found in Mitten Proxy with the decompile code snippet. And here you can find a small uh, code snippet, I hope you can read it, to um, also the graph API from Facebook, just as we saw before, slash firmware OTA update and just some other metadata and parameters like device type version and so on. So this is already what we know. But if we just look deep into the same decompiled function call, we can also see a second type of firmware OTA request. Here we're sending a request to also the graph API from Facebook, but to mobile release updates. And we also can add a field called full build is true. So that sounds really interesting for us. Now I ask myself two questions. First of all, I tried a lot of different firmware update stuff on the app and tried to sniff the communication, but this code got never executed. So is it actually used and why is it in there? And more importantly, what does it actually return if you just send an API request to it? So I've done that with a simple Python snippet. And as you can see here in the fields, I'm providing the parameter full build is true. That's the most important one. And I'm getting as a response this JSON that contains a couple of versions, an ID, and also this download URI, which is a zip file. This is about 330 megabytes large, so it has to be the firmware. So let's look deeper into it. This zip file contains this payload.bin file. This really reminds us of the Android OTA updates. So Android has this over-the-air update standard. We get like a zip file with the payload.bin file. This can be either differential update or full image. And then some meta information like how we can apply it, how it is signed, and so on. And which compatibilities it has and where you can install it. So actually, 
maybe these classes are actually running full Android. So I tried to extract the payload binary file, because this is just some binary blob file, and we actually want the system partition images. And I found on GitHub this amazing tool called Payload Dumper. It's a Python script where you can actually extract all these images. Most importantly, you can see here a system image with 500 megabytes large. So that sounds really interesting. So let's look deeper into it. So first of all, we can always see that the sunglasses are running full Android and they're often called Stellar. So I assume it's the code name internally for these sunglasses. And here I've listed some files that I found on the system partition. So we've got some binaries like command, a router, OTA server, web server, some configurations for the web server ports and so on. Also a binary library, a couple of them. Those are probably binaries uh, cont contained in apps. So Android has like this chain I interface where it can access native libraries. And those are probably the source. And then we have a privileged app called Stellar Wi-Fi service. This is now really interesting because if you want to hack the glasses, we need to know how is the Wi-Fi service uh, configured. So I decided to just decompile this Stellar Wi-Fi service APK that's running on the glasses. As you can see here, there are a lot of classes. I've just listed a couple of them. And in the, inside Oculus Stellar Wi-Fi, we can find this class called STA Connect Args. I've decompiled here a, a small code snippet, and it contains this function read from parcel. So in Android, parcels are some kind of objects where you can store data in. And we're reading the SSID, the password, and an IP from it. So as I read this, this has to be some kind of functionality to actually configure the Wi-Fi hotspot. So if you look at the bigger view again, the Stellar Wi-Fi service APK actually controls this Wi-Fi direct hotspot and sets the security using these connection arguments, which contains the SSID and password. But obviously a Wi-Fi hotspot is not enough. We need some kind of web server. So if you look back again in the Stellar Wi-Fi service APK on the glasses, we also can find a class, class called Web Server Manager. Now this is really interesting because it contains some functions called start server, stop server, open web ports, and so on. And it uses the system properties.set functionality in Android. This is used to launch this process in the background. And it also has a function called get URL, which I can just get a HTTPS URL with the IP and the web server suffix, which is slash stellar web server. Now if we integrate this again in our larger overview, we can see the Stellar Wi-Fi service APK does not only launch the Wi-Fi service, but also the web server. And from the file directory we saw earlier, we have some binaries of the web server and also some config files. Obviously, to get the security, we need to dig deeper into those binaries. So I've decompiled them with Gitara, and here's like just a really, really high level overview of some classes I found. So we have this abstract web server request handler, and for each media type, there's one request handler that inherits this. So we have one for media, one for telemetry, one for bug reports, and so on. Of course, those request handler have like the normal functions from a web server, like get method, get URL, handle request, and so on. But they also have some security related functionality. So get authentication token expiry is security enabled and retrieve authentication token. So we can assume the web server also requires some kind of authentication. And if you also look through it, it reads a configuration file that I've listed on the right side, and it has so those protocol handlers defined. Now, for example, here, this is applied to my glasses. It uses HTTPS on port 443 with TLS enabled. So now we have the full overview on how the media communication is working. So we can send an API request to the sunglasses over the Wi-Fi hotspot. We are just sending this request to Stellar Web Server slash asset for media, and we provide an authentication token. Now this is then handled by the request handler for the media files. Now you might already 
thought, okay, this sounds quite secure, is more or less state of the art, so why should we be able to hack it? So first of all, the Wi-Fi hotspot is secured with a password, our communication from the web server is SSL encrypted, and we need an authentication token to communicate with it. So with these three layers of security protecting it, which are making our life as hackers currently more difficult. So let's dig deeper into it to actually fi find a way how we can bypass it. So the Wi-Fi Direct hotspot on these sunglasses uses this Wi-Fi peer-to-peer manager functionality from the Android SDK. And this also has a function called create group where you just provide a channel, a config for the hotspot and a listener. We can see this in the decompiled companion app that's running on your phone. Here also on this left side. So first we are looking what Android SDK version we are running. If it's above 29, then we're creating a Wi-Fi peer-to-peer -peer config, setting the network name and the passphrase, and then we create the group. Now below you can also find the code snippet where we're creating the password. It's just 63 random characters. So this also sounds really secure. Now, where can we actually find a problem? So this create group function was added in Android SDK level 29. And that's why we're also differentiating between it. But a lot of devices are still running older Android versions. And for those, we're just directly using this Wi-Fi group manager without manually defining this Wi-Fi peer-to-peer -peer config which contains the password. So which password is actually used in those cases? So I decided to just give it a try and try to trace the set passphrase function from the Android SDK, which is in the Wi-Fi peer-to-peer group. I did this with Frida. So on the right side, you can see a small JavaScript code snippet. I'm just overriding the implementation of this set passphrase function and actually printing it and then just executing it normally. Now I tested this on two different devices, one with an old SDK version, one with a new one. The new one, we have just as we guessed before, these 63 random characters. And actually every time you press the download button in the app, this password changes. So this sounds quite secure. But for older SDK versions, this is quite different. So we have this eight characters long password without any special characters, and it doesn't change. So I tried resetting the glasses and I tried to log in on my phone with a different Facebook account and it was still the same password. So for these old Android SDK versions, we can just capture the Wi-Fi hash when the target is connecting the phone to the glasses. Then we can crack it offline at home. We have a lot of time, can come back at any later time and it's still the same Wi-Fi password. So in these cases for old Android SDK versions, this Wi-Fi Direct Hotspot is secured with the password, but it's so weak so we can actually bypass it. But even if you're in the network, the traffic is still encrypted and we need a, a authentication token. So let's look further into the encryption. So my idea is if you're communicating to a web server on the internet, Usually the remote server has the private key and then you have a certificate signed by a trusted authority. Now you as a hacker of course cannot access the private key. But in case of these sunglasses, those are shipped out. So it's probably not a good idea to put private keys and a certificate from a, from a, a trusted authority on it. So it has to be some kind of self-signed certificate or something different. So here is just one a code snippet I found in the app, but there are multiple different ones. Here we are, for example, overriding the hostname verifier and just returning true every time you verify it. So my idea is, is the SSL certificate actually verified at all? So I did a small experiment. So if you're transferring the media files, you usually have the same IP. So your phone has the IP 192.168.49.1 and the sunglasses have the IP 192.168.49.2. So I just tried logging into this Wi-Fi Direct hotspot using a fixed IP, which is the same of the sunglasses. So actually this 
send now the web request from the phone to my attacker machine and not the sunglasses. Now secondly, I just created a small Flask web server in Python, but just returned a media MP4 file that I had on my PC and pressed the download button in the companion app. Now, to my surprise, actually now the videos were downloaded from my PC and shown in the app. So this means the certificate is actually there, but never verified. So now we can get access to the Wi-Fi hotspot. We can also see the traffic in plain text if you do a man-the-middle attack. And now also the authentication token becomes obsolete because in case of a man-the-middle attack, we can get access to it. So last, the most important step. How can we exploit this? So if your target that you're attacking is creating a hotspot with the sunglasses, you can just capture in the first step this authentication token. Now you can go back home, crack the password offline, and come back when you have it. Now in the second step, you can connect again to this Wi-Fi hotspot and launch a man-the-middle attack. I did this the classic really simple ARP poisoning attack, so I'm just sending out these ARP packages in a for loop every two seconds, and that's more or less it. Then I configure my IP tables to actually forward all the packets from port 443 to 8080. When running my reverse proxies, in this case mitten proxy, and just capturing all the media files. So how does it actually look if you execute it? So here we have now recorded our videos. They are available for download, and we are downloading them. Now this creates a Wi-Fi hotspot. I logged into this Wi-Fi hotspot and launched this man the middle attack. And down there you can see the requests um, that I captured that was done between the glasses and the phone. Now just during, as we saw during the reverse engineering process, it actually sets an API request to Stellar Web Server with the media ID and an authorization token. Now this way we can actually unmask all the footage that's downloaded from the glasses to your phone, to your companion app. And the victim doesn't even notice that we are doing a man-the-middle attack and capturing all the media files. But this is just the request. If you want to decode the media files, this is actually really easy, because if you look at the response, we can see it just contains the mp4 file header, so it's just the full mp4 video file that you can just download on, on your PC and play it back. But we can all do also more fun stuff. So we're controlling the requests and the responses. So we can also inject fake videos and alter the footage that's more or less recorded. Here you can see we are downloading the videos now, and step by step we are replacing the media files with the ones I control, and you can see here the thumbnails are updating. Now step by step, every time the video is downloaded, these new thumbnails are shown and the new full new video is actually shown. And this is how you can unmask and unveil the footage that's recorded on the sunglasses and also alter and inject fake videos on the companion app of your target. Now to get back to the motivation why I'm doing this talk, I did this during a live bug bounty hacking event and I, of course, I reported it to the Facebook team and this vulnerability is fixed now, so thanks a lot for handling it. But also I want to motivate and inspire you to do bug bounty hunting on IoT devices. So here you have now a small methodology set for the sunglasses, and if you have ideas how to hack them or if you want to collaborate, you can just have a chat with me afterwards and maybe find something. So thanks a lot. <laughs>